Welcome to Riding the Edge. I'm uh, out working on a feature video, but I wanted to take take a moment to touch on a topic. Why we just call this Topic Tuesday? <laughs> I know it's kind of, kind of cheese ball. I know. But a uh, comment was left on one of my Affinity Photo videos that I had made, probably the one of the first ones I had made. It was about uh, processing raw, processing your raw images in Affinity Photo. And so, I just like to address the comment to set a couple things straight. Now, just let me start by saying I'm not an expert at Affinity Photo. I never claimed to be. I just want to make sure that that's. Uh, I always I state that all the time. But I'm just a photographer who was looking for an alternative to Adobe products and found that Affinity Photo met my needs quite well. Anyway, so the topic is processing your raw images in Affinity Photo. The comment reads, if you're interested in a complete workflow, it is useful to understand that once you develop, once the develop button is triggered, the settings and adjustments have been made Affinity in, made in Affinity Photo are baked into the RAW and there is no going back and you cannot and it cannot be undone. Nor can a RAW that is not developed be saved for further work in any other session. So it is a good idea to duplicate your RAW before working in Affinity Photo. Now here's where I think he misunderstands how Affinity Photo works. It is true that when you're working on the RAW, you are, once you've made your selections and you hit develop, it puts it into the photo persona and you can't undo your RAW changes. Which in, uh, in practice, I have not found that to be an issue because I have the original. Now just because you have edited the RAW image doesn't mean that Affinity Photo is overwriting your original RAW file. If that's the case, I would have a bunch of files on my computer that were overwritten by Affinity Photo, and that's just not the case. You can't even save a RAW image, so there's really no way to copy over the original. So this idea that you need to make a duplicate of your RAW image makes no sense. My philosophy with raw processing is I'm not trying to get the final image when I'm doing the raw process. What I'm trying to do is to make sure I have the right information going with me into the photo persona. Which means I'm not leaving highlight information behind. I'm getting the exposure close. Um, the contrast, I, I tend to err on a little le less contrast, because you can always add contrast. Ultimately, when I save an image after processing it, so I save it as a TIFF. And so that becomes my master file. And if I ever want to go all the way back to the RAW, I, I certainly can, because I have that as well. Now, I'm not sure if all that makes sense. <laughs> if I keep communicating it in a, in a way that makes sense anyway. Now, I didn't start my YouTube channel to be a, uh, a rep for Affinity Photo. But I am finding that I am a minority. I hear the word industry standard for Photoshop and Lightroom, which might be the case. I guess it depends on what, what industry you're talking about. For me, all I need is to publish my photos on the internet and make prints. And for me, Affinity Photo does, does that just fine. I've made prints up to 30 inches, and I've published 
many, many photos so far in the last six months on the internet using Affinity Photo. So, it, it is different than Photoshop. I don't expect Affinity Photo to be as powerful or bloated, you could say, but we'll just say as powerful as Photoshop. It's a $50 program. But anybody that will sit down and actually use it for a little bit will realize that it's, it's quite robust and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that you can do in it. You may have to do different, but you can still accomplish your objective if you're actually willing to sit down and learn it. Something else that's bugged me a little bit about YouTube photographers that I've seen talking about photo editing options when they talk about Affinity Photo They've never really used it enough to actually know what you can do with it. They, they, they take what they know from Photoshop and they try to just use Affinity Photo in the same way. And it's just a different program. You just have to figure out its strengths and its weaknesses and you work with it. Now it's possible I'm wrong about different aspects of Affinity Photo. And if you know something that I don't, please pass it along. I'm always trying to learn more. As I've said before, everything that I did in Photoshop, I can do in Affinity Photo. I haven't found anything so far that I need to do that I can't. I'm going to get back to my, uh, my photo project here. So, until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.